This to everyone. This is DJ Logan signing in out for night.
que yo quiera Vacila en la noche entera Entre rumba y borrachera people thank you so much thank you dj logan uh, really appreciate you taking the time to help us do this music for the participants and for the show uh, really uh, appreciate you taking the time and helping us with this welcome everybody this is rohit adwal your host and your friend for the day along with me i have uh, ajit mohan who's our guest speaker for the day. Uh, Ajit's introduction uh, is not really required, but I will still do the, uh, the needful uh, when time comes. But before that, I do want to um, take this uh, opportunity to sincerely thank everybody for taking your time on, on a weekday to be with us. Uh, sincere appreciation to all the audience, to our partners, to our speakers to make this uh, series uh, a very, very successful series. Even today, we have over 1,500 people who have registered for this session alone. I call that a success. And with continued participation and engagement of all the members, all our partners and engaged audience, I think it's a, it's a huge uh, reward to MMA and to us as a team to actually build towards what, what we think is uh, helping with building the future for everybody in, in these tough times. We are very pleased to uh, welcome all of you today. Um, the session that we are talking about today is about India Unplugged. And the, the topic of discussion, to be, to be very honest today, is really about what are we doing of new business models? How are we building the new businesses? And what are we trying to work to? Ajit is going to help us understand some of those new business models that are shaping the future in this digital era. So um, before I get to that, a quick three minutes overview on our MMM video, a welcome video and a quick overview on MMM, and then I'll get into the discussions right away with Ajit. So that was just a short video uh, on MMA and what we are looking at. As MMA, who are we? We are here to help uh, marketeers understand advertising and marketing on mobile. And our mission is really to help accelerate transformation and innovation uh, through the use of advertising and marketing on these devices. Um, our strategic priorities is to really build all guidance, guidance principles, um, policies around what uh, the future will hold, uh, especially when it comes to capability building, uh, measurement and impact, and also helping inspire the audience and the industry of the work that we are doing. Last but not the least, as, uh, as any industry body, we also do advocacy. These are some of the part member benefits. Uh, you all will have access to this slide and uh, to this video later on. I'm not going to work through uh, each and every one aspect of it. But our endeavor is to really help build continuous learning. This session is actually a part of that uh, endeavor that we have to help shape the future uh, when it comes to advertising and marketing. And we believe the digital era will obviously fast track this uh, learning. On, and also uh, conscious to the work that uh, uh, everybody else is doing around COVID-19, we've also built a COVID-19 hub uh, to look at some of the good practices that are being put in place uh, as uh, brands, by brands and agencies alike on what is happening. But also a lot of 
um, support material around what you should be looking at in, in such times and where you should be investing more time. Couple of um, educational programs that we are launching, we started this last month, we are going to announce our certification program on the 17th of uh, June. So please save the date if you're interested to participate in this to get credit, uh, accreditation to uh, your already existing um, diplomas and uh, certificates, please do uh, reach out to us at APAC at mmaglobal.com. And another initiative that we've started is the Ideathon initiative. This is about uh, bringing marketing problems and working technology solutions to those marketing problems. We did this last year and we are doing the version 2.0. This is an Asia Pacific world, uh, wide program where we are trying to bring some of the marketeer problems, the actual day-to-day -day marketing problems and bring them to um, life through uh, solving them through technology. That's what we are trying to do. So if you are interested or if, if there are any marketing problems that you have or if you are one of the developers or technology companies who would like to participate, please do uh, reach out to us, the email address is there. So many thanks for this, uh, appreciate your time. And we have a lot of uh, other webinars coming up. Coming up. Uh, this is a small list of the webinars in the near future. So please, uh, we look forward to your engagement on that. With that, let me introduce our guest for today. Ajit Mohan, he is the vice president and managing director of uh, Facebook India, and he spearheads the company's India Charter. Prior to Facebook, Ajit helped set up Hotstar. Um, I think everybody in India and at least in Asia knows it's a leading OTT service. And by profession, he is a management consultant. Uh, he's worked with McKinsey and company for about 10 years uh, and has worked across uh, almost every continent, Ajit, if I'm not wrong, except for Africa, um, and uh, also has co-authored a book uh, on India's awakening uh, to 2010 report uh, while he was a fellow at the McKinsey Global Institute. Um, and his, he also has a degree of uh, computer engineering, so man of a lot of hats. Uh, on his personal endeavor, his interest is in pu public speaking with a degree in economics and foreign policy with John Hopkins. I'll get tired of reading this by now, I'm sure. But, uh, and works a uh, lot in- I think can move on, Rohit. And no, no, no. I think it was public policy, not public speaking. But public hey. Public policy, public policy, yes. Economics the, and foreign the policy. challenge that it gets to be too long. So maybe we should move on. No, but people should know, uh, Ajit. Uh, John, John Hopkins uh, for foreign, foreign policy and also works in social sector, uh, which covers child nutrition in Bihar and uh, some of his uh, reform schools in Cincinnati. Uh, he's also a father to a six-year-old and a one-year-old, and I'm sure both of them are now ready to get over with the lockdown. I don't know if, uh, Ajit, you had a picture before lockdown and after lockdown on the hair that uh, you've created during this time. <laughs> That's but, right. Those two. But this welcome to the show, Ajit. Um, thank thank you. you so much for taking the time. We really appreciate. And uh, uh, we hope everybody at home is well with you, uh, well, and uh, everybody's taking care. All well, Rohit. Great. So Ajit, last time when I spoke to you, very briefly, this was during the Give India um, episode that was happening on Facebook. You guys supported the Give India charity donation. I think it was one of the largest charity donations that happened um, in India to the PMK. I believe it was a very successful sh uh, show. So. Can you share some insights of why you guys did that? What was the motivation behind it? And how are you uh, part, partaking in that uh, endeavor? Yeah, of course, Rohit. And it, it, it was with Give India. I think just to clarify, it wasn't uh, PM Cares on the particular I for India concert uh, that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think uh, it, it's, you know, in many ways uh, and and probably one of the few occasions when all of us are going through the same experience globally uh, and, and definitely uh, in Asia. And, and we believed uh, there was an opportunity for us to show up and be helpful. 
and and Facebook fundraisers, which is essentially the tool that allows uh, anyone to raise money uh, for causes that they believe in on Facebook, uh, hadn't launched in India, um, and and it was going to happen in the next few months. But we thought, especially in the context of the economic disruption that has happened in India, uh, that there was a pretty material role for us to uh, just A, create awareness, and B, uh, really use the opportunity to raise money. Uh, and, and we entered into the collaboration with Give India. Um, and and the, the format of the concert was also a great opportunity to showcase the best of Bollywood. Um, that's my one-year-old behind me, if you, if you folks can hear him. Um, I just wanted to make sure this was very real uh, work from home experience for all of you. Um, and, and, and therefore the I for India uh, concert, Rohit. I think we were able to build, uh, bring um, artists and creators together. Uh, we were able to raise a substantial amount of money, but more than that, I think it was also a great opportunity to showcase what each one can do individually and how easy it is to raise money on a, for a cause today. Uh, that was the trigger, but in, in reality, I think all of us have to continue to show up uh, over the next few weeks and months in India and around the world, uh, just given the kind of shock uh, that, that's been dealt to economies everywhere. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's very, uh, very nice of uh, Facebook to help uh, with that cause. And I'm sure uh, there are many more corporates and individuals doing the same. Uh, this is unprecedented times and we all need to do our bit. On that note, uh, Ajit, on a personal front, would you like to share something that you may have done as uh, lending a hand to the society? Yeah, uh, I think in the context of the lockdown, uh, Rohit, uh, my effort really has been um, in terms of financial contributions. And, and uh, rather than create something uh, uh, entirely new, I think uh, uh, there are so many great institutions uh, in India, in Delhi and around the country who are doing such fabulous work. I think. Uh, while being shut at home, I thought one of the material ways to help everyone was to uh, put the spotlight on those organizations as well as contribute financially uh, where I could. Um, I, I must confess, I also feel lucky uh, to work for an organization which has been in the, uh, in the center of a lot of the COVID response. So you started by asking about the I for India concert. I, I do believe uh, the, the India team here in particular, uh, over the last few weeks, all of us have been working uh, from home since the middle of March, but there was such tremendous energy within the, uh, the Facebook team here uh, to really leverage uh, our entire uh, services and apps, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or WhatsApp, uh, to really uh, make sure that we were helping, whether it was to raise money, whether it was about uh, ensuring people had access to accurate information, working with state and central governments. So I do feel lucky and I did see uh, that what I could do that was the most impactful uh, was really making sure that the energy and commitment that I saw from my team in India uh, was channeled uh, to the right places to create impact. And, and that's really been, I think there's one thing in terms of what you can do personally to contribute, uh, but I, I definitely feel lucky that I have a platform and a company that really cares about this and in many ways has become even more uh, at the center of not just connecting friends and family, uh, but being in a role where we could help governments, people around the country. Uh, so I, I don't think the personal and uh, the work in this case have been quite unified actually, Rohit. Uh, very interesting. And I think it's, um, it's, you rightly said, the opportunity a company like Facebook can present it uh, every individual, every worker, every employee that, that is there with, with a global effort is uh, unparalleled. And I think as individuals, uh, we, we are all very grateful for where we are right now. Um, and at this time, I would only like to call out the frontline workers because of them, we are sitting where we are uh, doing what we are doing right now and uh, engaging with the audience. So like um, every, uh, Ajit, if you know, every, um, episode that I start, I actually start with a quote. And I have this quote in front of me. It's uh, just enough madness to make her interesting. And this is really uh, by um, Ethica. 
And this is a quote in context of where we are as an industry. There is a lot of madness. madness. There are budgets being cut. There are verticals which are getting decimated. There are industry segments which are not really working as well as they should be. In the context of this, what I wanted to ask you is to start off is the first question is if you have businesses that are going through all this challenge right now, businesses where consumers are not feeling the connection and in a world where in six weeks, the digital transformation has forced industries to relook, reimagine themselves. What trends are you seeing as, uh, as consumers significantly step up their time on social media messaging platform, which you started off talking about is because of that you were, you know, Facebook was able to do a lot more, but what are the new trends other than just the consumption going up? Yeah, um, and, and, and Rohit, I think you uh, used a quote from one of my fa favorite books, uh, yes. To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, I think a couple of things, and, and I, I think for everyone on the call, I'm sure they're seeing it uh, quite visibly in their daily lives and, and in the work that they're doing as well. Um, one, um, we are seeing that even uh, sectors, I, I think there's been a lot of conversation about uh, the acceleration of the adoption of digital. And that's certainly true. It's quite visible for, for everyone. Um, I think the interesting part is even sectors that traditionally have been slower uh, to adopt digital. Uh, we have seen that there is an acceleration even in those sectors. So the offline to online transition, uh, there is a trajectory of uh, consumer behavior and companies adopting that has gotten accelerated. But I think the shock has formed models that were quite comfortable uh, in, in offline that did not feel uh, a dramatic need to go online. Those are changing as well. And, and I think uh, healthcare and education are two obvious ones. And, and in the case of healthcare, um, I think we are also starting to see that uh, even governments around the world may be starting to look at this and saying, if, if, if uh, fundamentally the objective is to expand access to uh, healthcare or even advice from doctors um, deep into communities that may not have uh, healthcare systems in place, here's a great opportunity to leverage uh, uh, the fact that a lot of people are online. So that's, that's certainly one. I think uh, second, there is the question of uh, the emergence of hyper-local models, right? Uh, yeah. I, I think in a world which was uh, disrupted where the norms of the connectedness kind of was paused at least for a while, uh, I think there's definitely a window for hyper-local models to show up. Uh, and, and some of them, you know, maybe I'm sure there are a lot of new enterprises that have formed in the last two months. I'm sure many have accelerated and you know, it's quite possible that uh, not all these hyper-local models may survive as the world kind of gets back to some sense of normalcy, but I think it's definitely put the spotlight on a lot of local uh, businesses uh, and, and, and given a bit of a fill up to models that may otherwise may not have seemed viable. Um, and the third one, uh, and, and no surprise, uh, you've seen a lot of energy from us is, is really um, in a world where we may not be able to connect with the ease that we had uh, even two or three months ago, um, how can we kind of create virtual presence tools, right? Uh, whether just in terms of connecting with our friends and family, uh, whether it's a certain way of uh, tools that enable remote work or, or even VR. Um, I, I think uh, it's likely to accelerate a lot of models where you can get close to the experience of being in the room or in a place uh, with people that you care about or, or with the kind of experiences that you want to have um, where in a world that may be constrained, I think there is a huge role for technology to play. So uh, for me, these are just examples, Rohit. I think the uh, the overarching theme, of course, is um, that, that 
uh, the general comfort with uh, uh, leveraging online tools. And, and, and uh, it literally was eight to 10 weeks. And, and for many countries that are still in, in the middle of a version of curfew or circuit breaker or lockdown, it, it's a fairly um, uh, enforced experience of a different way of living. And it's hard to imagine that as much as it's come with constraints and everyone is keen to get out there uh, and engage physically, it's, it's difficult not to believe that it would have exposed people to uh, new norms and behavior, some of which they will continue to adopt uh, in the months and years going ahead. That's, that's, uh, that's right, Ajit. And I also think it's um, the, the word that we are listening to and we are hearing a lot is the new normal. And I think as, as businesses, as uh, human beings and as corporates, uh, we all are trying to get used to what that new normal will be. Whether it is uh, whether it's working from home as as a regimented practice in organizations, or just being more kinder and more uh, aware of the environment that surrounds you, I, th I think they, they are they are pros and cons. But uh, will we go back to what it life was? Maybe um, human pe people are, have short memories, so maybe that would be the case. But not not really in the near future. And I think this is an episode once in a lifetime kind of an episode which we which we witnessed like many others before us so on that note i just wanted to uh, take a minute to talk to the audience audience uh, there are many questions that are coming so i do want to make sure that you guys uh, where 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 you can ask the question you can ask the question uh, uh, on the link here uh, on your panel the control panel that you have on your screen, you can ask your questions. Please do state your name, your designation, and your company name so that we have the context when we are asking that question to Ajit. Uh, please type your questions in that section and make sure that it is related to the subject of discussion and not otherwise. So I will appreciate that. Also, if you are using the social media handles, we are live on Facebook, so APAC.MMA and the, some of the other uh, handles are there for you to use. So Ajit, on, on that point that we spoke about how, how we are looking at all these new developments that are happening, there's always a silver lining. With every problem, um, there's an opportunity. And we believe that this is a very important lens that we should look at. This, this uh, playbook series that I, we have uh, initiated is really from that outlook to make sure that we look at it from an optimistic point of view. Uh, we look at, look forward to what is happening. So from that perspective, when the world around us is changing, the consumer behavior is changing as, as you rightly said, and there are new business models that are co coming up. The business models are always defined when the transaction gets completed, when the money is in the bank. So what are the fundamental changes in consumer path to purchase that you see will get developed and what are the opportunities for that business? Yeah, I, I, I think, uh, and, and given this is MMA Rohit, I, I think if we kind of look at it from a, a marketing lens and not, not kind of indulge too much jargon, but I, I think if I look at, you know, how uh, consumers get introduced to new products and services uh, to, uh, you know, the classic sort of, top of the funnel, building awareness, building brand, uh, to all the way into a, a world in which um, new sort of vehicles show up uh, where you can actually, you know, purchase and, 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 and close the loop. Um, one thing to call out, Rohit, is um, as much as I think there will be a, a lot of energy around the creation of new enterprises, new ventures, and new business models, um, I think it's also about a lot of companies that have existing models uh, where there's an opportunity for them to accelerate. I, I would not position this as just, you know, this is, uh, this is a, a moment when everything gets taken down to zero and, and everyone has to start from scratch. I think the reality is um, uh, the brands and assets and capabilities that companies have built do matter. Uh, obviously, you know, you are seeing the pain uh, across uh, economies around the world, large and small businesses, uh, where 
at least some businesses may not be able to come out of it um, in, 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 with the strength that they uh, had going into this uh, crisis. But equally, I think a lot of existing business models uh, will be fueled or accelerated. So I, I do want to clarify that because um, I, I think it would be a miss to position this as only an opportunity for new enterprise. Um, I, I don't think that'll be the case. Um, and, and then to the question that you asked, I do think a couple of things are, are, are going to open up. One, uh, uh, to some extent, I, I think uh, even for all of us who have spent a lot of time in digital and, and spent time uh, immersed in marketing, um, I, I think marketers have traditionally been fairly conservative about using digital to build brands. Um, I, I think we have carried some of our uh, legacy in terms of thinking about where brands can be built and where you can drive uh, actual lead generation or sales. Um, and I do think this is an opportunity to really look at digital and digital vehicles as a mechanism to build brands as well. Uh, in a world where uh, people uh, may be spending a lot more time online than they were earlier, and in a world where discovery may not happen as much offline, um, I think there's a tremendous opportunity for brands to think through what does it mean to introduce a new product and service to a consumer who has never heard about you. Uh, I, I think that that top of the funnel marketing is going to get disrupted quite acutely. Uh, and, and at least if, if I think through some of the conversations that I've had in the last six to eight weeks, even companies and brand managers who have been extraordinarily successful uh, in using a certain kind of a playbook for the last 10, 20, 30 years, and who have even been aggressive about digital, uh, I think are orienting their thinking to using digital for brand building in a way that would not have been conceivable even three months ago. And I think that's that's the right thing to do. Um, at the other end of it um, is, I think you, you have to really ask the question, um, you know, how, um, uh, if, if, if a lot more people are willing to discover brands online or build affinity online, uh, even though they may not have an experience of walking into a, a, a store uh, in a way that would have quite easily happened, uh, then, how can uh, all of us who play different roles in this ecosystem make it easier for consumers to translate that interest or affinity uh, to actually making a purchase? Um, and, and, and I think uh, a lot of it is just about reducing friction. Uh, and I think some companies have done an amazing job of that, but if you're fundamentally solving for the economy as a whole, including sectors that uh, traditionally have been quite rooted in offline and are coming online for the first time, I think it's worth thinking through, how do you make it really simple uh, to understand what the product catalog is? Uh, how do you make it easy uh, to get clarifications or questions answered? Uh, and then how do you make it really easy to close the purchase? Uh, and of course, you know, payments uh, plays a big role in it. Uh, but I, I think fundamentally the thematic I would say is a lot of work that needs to be done to make sure that friction is reduced uh, because the best way to fuel new behaviors will be to make it elegant and frictionless. And I think there's a lot of opportunity there across categories and sectors. Interesting. And on, on payments, I think uh, what is what is also very important is to note that it is now becoming uh, with cashless payments and the whole last six weeks, what it has taught us is that it's only going to get more and more digital. And I think that that is where we are headed. So um, just a quick um, pause here. I just wanted to ask uh, the audience to keep them engaged. A poll. Uh, I have a poll. Uh, Ajit, you may not want to answer this, but I have a poll for everybody. What does actors in Ajit's Twitter handle, second acticus <laughs> mean? Name of a place? person, clothing line, music band, none of the above and all of the above. So if you guys can take your time and help answer this question. And in the meantime, and once you've answered, the screen will uh, 
go away from the uh, the overlaid screen will go away and you'll be back to the uh, webinar so uh, ajit uh, while people are doing this and i will share the results uh, very soon advertising and marketing as you rightly said they are new opportunities but they are also old traditional companies that are doing it differently and thinking about it differently and i truly believe and i agree with you that the brand building will actually move to digital which is something which people have been hesitant about advertising and marketing will change and the learning that we are getting out of this very composite 6 8 10 week learning will have to accommodate the changes in the strategy and plan so while all of that is happening and there is a need for us to define what those new objectives are and define what what that opportunity is do you think the creation this leads to the creation of those new business models that you were talking about or does this actually transform the industries and help trend the uh, and help shape the trend from a consumer perspective as we have always believed that technology is following the consumers and not the vice versa so where do you think the right balance is i i, I suspect rohit uh all of it will happen right and and you know i i started my career in in southeast asia in in 97 just before the uh, asian financial crisis we then had uh, the dot com meltdown uh, and then you know uh, the the uh, the the economic crisis of 2008 so uh, maybe maybe this is sort of uh, the the slight bit of wisdom that comes with age but uh, you do realize that in each one of these shocks uh, and, and invariably sort of, uh, you know, for dot-com and then the 2008 crisis, the boom before that, uh, there was an assumption that, you know, everything would change dramatically. And, and reality is in each one of these transitions, you saw things that were agile, uh, and, and, and thought about the shock and the disruption as mechanisms to renew and, and, and change the ways of working uh, and, and aggressively pursue opportunities or discard things that they were doing uh, and, and, and equally. And, and therefore, many of the older you know, companies that have been around for a while uh, did manage to uh, survive and, and even do really well. And then there were many companies that didn't. And equally, each one of these uh, shocks did create entirely new business models and enterprises. So I, I, I think, you know, I, I would not uh, make the mistake of being overly simplistic about this. Mm -hmm. uh, my sense is it, it finally will come down to uh, the extent to which uh, companies, small or big, uh, show the agility, uh, I think, that the moment uh, uh, seeks and, and really thinks through uh, what could be the uh, changes in behavior? What has changed in the world? What are the changes that will get reversed? What are the changes that in a secular fashion are going to be here for a while? And, and then really adapt and think through what does that mean for the models that they are currently pursuing or the capabilities that, that they have built uh, mm -hmm. and really be agile uh, in terms of evolving, not just, uh, you know, just thinking through the business that existed in March of 2020, but where's the world headed over the next few weeks, months, and years, uh, and, and really think through how, how can they fit that world. And, and in some ways, I guess, uh, you have to be fairly dispassionate uh, uh, about giving up a lot of things that may have been of value uh, or things that you, know, you believe were of value to your company. And I think that's going to happen across small and large businesses. Um, uh, and I don't think it's going to be a linear answer at all, Rohit. Yeah, also, it's it's interesting you said that people have to give up. I, I was actually on a, another panel discussion where somebody asked me a question saying, um, online education, is this the future? And I, I fundamentally believe there's, there's this balance, as, as you rightly said, there's the right balance that needs to be created. And I, I, I shared some thoughts there by saying that whether it's online education or online um, uh, consulting, medical consulting, it's not going to be the future. It is going to be a hybrid of online and offline because the basic human need for having friends, for example, for students to go to an environment where they have playground, where they have extracurricular activities, friends and everything, 
that you cannot take away, that cannot be replaced by online education. So maybe there's a hybrid and same is the case with maybe uh, uh, hospital teleconsulting and all that because the patient still feels comfortable when the doctor touches him and so on and so forth. So I think the right balance and I, I just take the example that you you quoted about corporations and organizations, but it's the same for human beings. And at the end of the day, the corporations are made of the human beings. Yeah, I, I think the one thing I agree, Rohit, but the one thing that I do want to point out is when we think about medicine or, or, or education, I, I think it's important to realize that a lot of the uh, a lot of the offline models uh, probably cater a lot better to the top end of the income stack uh, in countries around the world, um, and and to some extent, I think the 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 tremendous positive force of digital hopefully is in uh, uh, in at least moving the needle towards greater democratization of access to good healthcare or access to good education. Uh, and, and therefore, I, I, would just, I would just flag that because um, it is true, I think, where people can afford to have both online or offline or people who can afford to have, let's say, access to the best you know, undergraduate programs in the world, um, there, there may still be a preference for that. Uh, but in reality, I think it, it, I'm also hyper-conscious that in India and in many places around the world, there's still a lot of people who don't have uh, who don't have that access. Yeah. So for them, any expansion uh, of digital is a huge net positive. And and I think uh, I, I would caution against sort of a frame uh, a framework that is uh, a bit too focused on the top end because I think uh, uh, from an income point of view because I think it's important to solve for the the world as a whole. Uh, and even within that, I think what you're seeing. For example, in education, is I'm, I'm starting to see many universities talk about the entire 2020-2021 calendar being online. So I, I, I do think there's definitely going to be an acceleration, uh, especially where the last few weeks have, have uh, created knowledge that you could do this differently. Sometimes better, but you could definitely do it differently. Fair enough. So just moving on, uh, you spoke about... Uh going from the top end of the consumer uh, chain to the broad masses and everybody else. Before I do that, just want to share the results. Uh, these are the results of the poll that was the name of a person, 54%. Actually, uh, if I may, uh, the answer, Ajit, is all of the above. It is actually a name of a place, person, clothing line, music band, and everything. <laughs> and, so it's a, it's an interesting when I when I read this uh, in your Twitter handle that's when I thought of making this poll. So yeah, at least uh, although just so that people know, so that they don't, uh, my handle came because you know I couldn't get my name and I'm a big fan of uh, Harper Lee's uh, book To Kill a Mockingbird. And for those and this is a huge nerd moment, uh, for those who are not aware, she had written a version of the book, uh, which then was published a couple of years ago called Ghost Set a Watchman. Uh, yeah. which had a very different depiction of uh, Atticus Finch. And I was only trying to make the point that the one that I admire is the second Atticus Finch. I wasn't trying to claim to be one, just to clarify, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for that. So coming back to the, and I think this is, this is really the big question that a lot of people uh, who are on the call today would be looking for. And I think we need to address this. And you, you started it off by saying we need to cater for the masses and for everybody from top to bottom. So I guess uh, let's address the elephant in the room. Geo has truly revolutionized uh, the telecom industry. But uh, what you guys did, Facebook, of the partnership and to the extent and the scale that you guys have done it with this partnership has never been done before. This is a business case. This is a business model. This is an example that many would cite in days to come of what has happened in India and has happened for a lot of the markets, for a lot of the developing markets can be an example for people to replicate. And I say that based on a comparison or a, or, or a note specifically comparing it to China because a lot of the business models, uh, such deals, such uh, expansion and growth have been seen out of China. But People have always said that that's a business model, but very rarely 
have we seen those business models being replicated? Yes, because they come from China. It's not easy to replicate that whatever happens in China. So, but India is a democracy. India is a much more open environment, much more open economy. And therefore a new business model like this, the partnership that you guys have had and the investment that you've had with Geo, does it show an emergence of India from the shadows of COVID? And what does that really mean? What does the FB Facebook Geo partnership really mean to the consumers, advertisers and digital players? Yeah, I, I guess uh, a lot of questions packed in there, Rohit. So yeah. if I if I unpack it a bit, I think sure. uh, the starting point uh, obviously was, and 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 for me, uh, it's it's not about. Uh, I, I think in, if you look at the mission of Facebook, I think the idea really has been uh, how can we really help connect people, connect communities around the world, and and provide people access to tools uh, that can fundamentally bring good to their lives. Uh, and, and, and we have always defined it as uh, as many people can be impacted positively. I think masses, I mean, I, I don't know whether I agree with that framing, but I think it's about uh, impacting uh, a, a large number of people around the world. And, and of course, uh, I think the growth of Facebook uh, shows sort of the extent to which we value the mission. I think for me, the first thing to call out, as you mentioned, is uh, with Geo. I think what we saw is a company that really has had a, a very meaningful uh, impact in India in terms of, in a very short period of time, um, dramatically changing the landscape when it came to access to affordable 4G. Um, I, I think between 2016 uh, when Geo launched and now, uh, if, if I'm getting my numbers right, I think with what Geo did and, and what the other telcos did to, in some ways, uh, 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 follow that model, almost more than, more than 500 million people have come online in less than four years. And I imagine it has to be the, uh, the fastest expansion in access to mobile broadband anywhere in the world. I imagine even relative to China. And, and, and I think for me, the the one of the big callouts why we were excited is is exactly that we thought there was an alignment in 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 mission and in terms of what the two companies value and 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 you know if, if i look at uh facebook's uh uh work in india we've always leaned in i think uh there's no question that india is a very special place for facebook the largest communities on, on, on Facebook and WhatsApp are in India. But equally, I think the excitement about India comes from really the opportunity to have impact here over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years in a country where, you know, which is clearly in the middle of a massive transformation. So I, I think the starting point of the geo uh, investment and the partnership came from that. Um, the, the second part to your question, I think you were asking, is there an India playbook? I think it's kind of what I heard, uh, heard you ask, Rohit. I guess, uh, Ajit, just to uh, restructure that, is this a new playbook that is being defined? Is this a new business model, which is emergence of India from the shadows of uh, uh, this, under the shadow of this deal, but beyond that, because of the unlikely chances of China models being replicated? You know, rather than have a view of, of uh, I mean, frankly, I mean, uh, China has created uh, so many exciting uh, enterprises uh, which are doing so well globally. So I, I do think uh, there's a lot of that model that is working really well. Uh, I think when I look at it, at least uh, when I look at the uh, opportunity in India, as well as uh, in digital in particular, Rohit, a couple of things, right? One, um, there's a lot of people coming online for the first time. If 500 million people have, have, have essentially seen the internet and largely only through the mobile, um, that, that kind of sets a certain kind of context. Uh, it's not people who've been around on the internet from the mid 1990s, right? And that defines how they respond to it, how they behave uh, and, and how they see access to tools, right? Uh, second is, um, 
in, in, in the other thing in in, in the uh, when you look at the indian economy is it's still in the middle of a, a movement from middle income to high income right if you look at it from a per capita basis uh, for companies around the world uh, the economic opportunity that india offers is very substantial I, i've forgotten uh, what the rank is now whether it's number 3 or 4 or 5 but i know it's heading towards 3 in terms of the the size of the gdp um so you you have to look at it from a massive economic opportunity uh and at the same time you have to make sure that the economics work for different cohorts or segments uh that you are trying to serve um especially uh, as it moves from middle income to high income and and the third one is is scale right it's it's a it's an extraordinarily complex country um there are different states uh with different languages for example um it, 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 it in many ways it's a unified whole but in many ways you you do see dramatic consumer behavior uh, uh across different states so if that's a description of india rohit i would argue that in in places in asia latin america and and africa that the economic opportunity for companies would probably look uh, it would be in, in countries that look closer to some of these underlying drivers uh, countries that are in the middle of exciting transformations uh, where scale matters where a lot of people are coming online for the first time and from that point of view uh, i do think a lot of what has happened here in the last few years and a lot of uh, the experiments and pilots that are getting kicked off now uh, will provide uh, uh, interesting lessons or playbooks for other countries and other companies because they look a lot more closer to what is happening here just as an example i think the the story in payments with upi which is the india stack uh, is an amazing one and and i think uh, in a very short period of time it has been a huge fueler of of uh, uh cashless transactions um and and i think there's a model there uh that can be replicated um so that that's that's one part of the answer the other part to geo itself is um in a world in which we believe the there is overlap and alignment in our missions uh the first pilot or experiment that we are trying together is can we fundamentally accelerate the digitization of the small business and and to how i characterize the attributes in an economy where small business plays a disproportionate role both in terms of contribution to gdp uh, in terms of share of the retail economy as well as share of jobs uh, i think we are trying to work with geo to figure out can we provide new tools to small businesses that fundamentally allow them to accelerate uh the the economic value creation uh and and in simple terms what that means for example is can we make it easier for example to order from within whatsapp uh uh whether it is to you know uh, uh easily locate a store uh identify a product uh and you know in a world if 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 we get uh, approval for payments for whatsapp uh where the the purchase transaction can be closed as well um and it it goes back to i think where we started this conversation that a lot of the value from offline to online will come uh, in the opportunity to reduce friction and and when you have a service like whatsapp that has deep engagement and is quite loved um, i do think we have an opportunity to add fundamental value to the economy and especially to small businesses so i see that as an example of how this india playbook uh, uh, could materialize rohit okay. thank you for that that's very insightful and i i was looking at the clock and we are running out of time it's just been so interesting uh, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a short break uh, i'm going to show the audience uh, a, one of the campaign that i had asked you which is your favorite campaign in such times uh, 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 so what what i actually had asked ajit was to share with us a campaign that he thought was very interesting uh, especially during these times and i'm going to share that with you and then maybe very quickly ajit can talk about why he why he thought that was his uh, personal favorite and then we'll dive straight into q and a we have lots of questions for all the people on the audience um 
if we cannot get to your questions, we will try and get all those questions sent across to Ajit so that he can help uh, answer them and we will get that back. So if we can play the video uh, uh, on his uh, on Ajit's uh, favorite campaign, which I'm doing right now. Hope you guys can see it. I was born during a quarantine. I don't remember it, of course, but for my mother, it was a very difficult time. I remember her telling me, I woke up one morning and the whole world had changed. She told me it was just you and me for many months. I'm sure it was very scary and frightening, but she wasn't alone. Everybody tried to do what they could to help. But she was also a very strong person. And then it was over. We came out into a new world, my mother and me. We can get through this. We all have the strength to do it. Life finds its way. I'm a hundred years old. And you just take care of that little miracle. Ajit. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, I, I think, uh, and, and forgive me folks uh, for uh, if it comes across as a Facebook pitch, but I really did like uh, this ad. And, and for me, the most, uh, the reason I liked it uh, is it's hopeful. I, I think in the middle of this crisis, especially when you're really in the middle of it, uh, I, I think it's hard not to think, what does the future look like? And, and for me, the most powerful part about this ad was uh, when she started talking about being born in the middle of a quarantine, um, you know, she's talking about something that happened 100 years ago, and 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 the ending saying I'm 100 years old, uh, and you know, watch out for the little one. I think it tells you that the world will get through this, that it's happened before, it's been tough times in the past, and yet the world will survive and and will come out of it, and she lived for 100 years. So, I th I think I I really like how hopeful it was uh, at a moment, I think, when uh, hope was needed. Equally, I, I think, Rohit, you know this, I love the, the Coke ad to the human race. Um, I, I think uh, for similar reasons, I think it was authentic uh, and it spoke to the moment and it was also uh, future facing. I think it, it kind of pointed to the future and said, we'll be out of it. There's still a lot to hope for. Um, there's, always a, there's always a silver lining. And Turn light at the end of the tunnel. So we all believe in that. So quickly getting on to question and answers, um, we will um, we will try and address most of them. And if we can, if Ajit, if you can quickly help answer some of these to begin with, and then we'll see how much time we have. So the first question I have here is from Vinod Thandani uh, from Mindshare, a mutual friend of us. Um, as always, great listening to you. But his question is. Facebook plus WhatsApp plus Geo. And you, you at least st started talking about WhatsApp and the power of WhatsApp. His question is Facebook plus WhatsApp plus Geo is a lethal combination. Could you please let us know how will this pan out, especially in India, when it comes to brand building that you were talking about and the digitization of new brands or the old brands? Yeah, I think two things, Vinod. I wouldn't call it lethal. I mean, because lethal, um, lethal can mean uh, negative. Uh, I see it as a, as a hugely positive thing. And, and I think one thing to really call out here is, and, I, and I've mentioned this many times before, uh, we see this as, you know, Facebook as a company, uh, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or WhatsApp and Geo, uh, it's, it's two sides of a triangle. I, I do think the, uh, in, in being so clear that uh, it's not an exclusive relationship, we still are a neutral platform and that there will be opportunities for other companies to plug into it. Um, I, I think it's it's quite important to, to keep 
reinforcing that because um, I, I worry about it being seen as lethal rather than how I see it, which is it's really good for India. Um, and, 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 and we have been thoughtful about designing it in a way where we are doing this, both the companies, because we believe it is good for the ecosystem as a whole. And, and we believe that the two companies working together can open new doors. Uh, and, and to that question, Vinod, I think the, the, the first energy is really around bringing the small businesses online and giving them access to uh, tools that allow them to uh, find new customers. Um, in, in very economic terms, we are hoping that that small business can sell a lot more uh, than they were doing earlier, both because it's become easier for those business or shops to be discovered, uh, because uh, customers find it easy to order, that it will create a virtuous cycle. Um, and, and therefore, uh, my sense is also the, the small businesses coming online and almost all of our energy is going to be focused on small businesses will spin off multiple opportunities for other companies, small and large. And, and, and in many ways, I see this as an enabler for the ecosystem that uh, there's an opportunity for us to uh, build the building blocks and not just the two of us with other companies that accelerates the digitization of the small business. And I think we know that as you know well, I think the more the small businesses are plugged into uh, the digital ecosystem, uh, I, I'm not even sure whether we have, uh, we can even imagine the multiplier positive impact that will come out of it. Thank you. Uh, I have another question. Um, quick answer, Rupali Sharma, could you share India launch plans for Facebook shops? Um, we are not yet launching in India. Uh, I think we'll have to come back. I think uh, I may be wrong on this in Asia pack. I think New Zealand is the market where uh, Facebook shops is open. Um, I, I think, you know, Rupali, we're, we're happy to come back to you as we think through uh, uh, how we are, how we are thinking about the launch in India, but it is not yet open in India. Next question um, is from Gong. And this is, this is slightly, um, I'm, I'm just trying to read a long question into a small this thing. So how do, how do you manage the content circulation on Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp that happens, which is with respect to violence, violence against women, um, anti, anti uh, patriotic messages, etc. Is there a method to this madness? Can you guys help solve this? Is there a work in progress from content moderation? Yeah, and and you know I, I'm happy through Rohit to share. Uh, there's a lot of uh, work that we have talked about publicly that we can share with you offline as well. But I think two points to make that. Uh, one, uh, to make a clear distinction between a, a public platform like Facebook and Instagram and a private messaging platform uh, like WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp, as you know, is end-to-end -end encrypted. So uh, uh, no one knows the messages that are being transmitted on WhatsApp. Uh, and, and therefore... I think a lot of the energy of WhatsApp is around how do we ensure there are mechanisms, for example, if there is spamming, uh, uh, users themselves have the ability to, uh, to report spams. Uh, and, and given that it's a private messaging platform, I think the energy is really on uh, relying on, 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 on users, of course. Uh, and, and where, you know, if, if you've thought about what's happened in the last uh, few months, just in the last year, uh, a lot of product changes, for example, on WhatsApp, like limiting uh, forwards to five frequently forwarded messages, uh, which during COVID was the frequently forwarded messages was reduced to one, was really meant to make sure that uh, it wasn't used as a platform for uh, misinformation to go viral. So there are a lot of mechanisms, but all those mechanisms are designed accepting or within the boundaries of a private encrypted messaging platform. I think on Facebook and Instagram, which are public platforms, uh, there are more active tools. Uh, and, and over the last few years, uh, we have invested a, a, a lot of resources, a lot of product changes uh, to make sure that safety and security uh, is really top of the agenda. And it, it, there are mechanisms in terms of uh, taking out 
uh, content of a certain kind. Uh, so for example, AI uh, picks up a lot of content that gets no distribution at all because the AI systems have been trained enough now to understand what kind of content violates community guidelines. Uh, content that violates community guidelines, and these are publicly uh, available guidelines, are taken off. Uh, there's an entire mechanism uh, that relies on third-party fact check checkers through the International Fact Checking Network, uh, where we rely on, on news organizations that have been certified by IFCN, uh, who have the opportunity to pull down uh, misinformation. So I, I, I think we could spend a lot of time, but I think only to mention that it's an extraordinary uh, focus for us to make sure that the platforms are used for good. Um, and then I think, frankly, we have seen even in the last two months uh, during uh, this shutdown or lockdown uh, that people have really uh, relied on Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp to stay connected with their friends and families. Um, that that remains the, the main purpose. Uh, and, and between tools, between uh, processes and investment in systems like AI, uh, we're very leaned in on, on making sure that content of a certain kind, whether it's violent content, uh, terrorist content, do not get distribution at all, or, or when they are flagged, they're taken down if they violate the community guidelines. Sanjeev, may, may, if, if, if it's possible, may I make a suggestion? Maybe if there's any of these documents that we can uh, put on the demand, uh, on, on demand, oh, webinar, we can uh, give a link to these documents. So if your office can send, send across some of those, we can yeah, maybe absolutely. give a link. A lot of the people can look at that. Yeah, uh, my sense know. is I think the company uh, is really leaned in. And even when I look at all, across digital, sure. uh, and, and when I see a question like this, it tells me that, we can do a lot more to uh, educate a wider set of people in terms of how much of our energy and resources go into uh, making sure that, uh, you know, uh, content of a certain kind or misinformation, uh, how do we limit uh, those on, on our platforms? Sure. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I know it's, uh, it's a very, uh, very long topic. We can actually have a full session on that topic, but moving on. Uh, there's an interesting question, and I thought um, this is uh, from Nishant Patel uh, from the AF AFK Gaming. Has the COVID-19 situation served as a catalyst for Facebook Gaming's plan uh, and for gaming and esports in India? And does the geo Facebook relationship open doors in this direction? Very interesting. On the second one, uh, nothing that uh, we have thought through. Um, uh, as you know well, I think. Uh, uh, Nishad, I think the, the gaming uh, ecosystem in India is growing really well. Uh, and, and I'm sure you're seeing it on your own services that um, there's, been a, there's been a pretty uh, material surge in consumption over the last few weeks. Uh, and that's the story that I hear from uh, partners of ours. I, I think, uh, um, you know, uh, we do play a fairly meaningful role uh, for gaming developers around the world. And, and we continue to expect to play that role. I think, Nishant, a lot of your peers uh, rely on us from a marketing point of view. Um, uh, we, we have a lot of tools and, and playbooks for uh, the gaming industry. And I think that continues. I think the reality is so many sectors have uh, grown disproportionately in the last few weeks. Uh, entertainment, uh, gaming, education. Um, so, I, I think that is the case. And to the extent that we can be helpful, uh, we are quite happy to lean in and, and help you think through how we can help your particular company as well, Nishant. Okay, one last question, and then I think we'll have to call it a day. <clears throat> so it is um, from Robert. Will Indian businesses have access to tools to sell online via Instagram, and WhatsApp and recently launched Facebook shop functions, which you have already answered. And how will Geo play a role given the fact that you've spoken about getting all these small SMB sector involved? What is that kind of partnership from top down from a Facebook perspective into Geo and then to the SMB sector? How does that play out? Yeah, and, and again, I, I, I would not agree with that hierarchical framing. I think I would think of it as two or three different things, right? 
I think we will continue to, uh, Facebook as a company, I think continue to lean in and invest uh, because it's so core to our mission of helping people leverage online tools. And that'll be across Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Um, second, I think the geo partnership is specifically uh, around WhatsApp and making it easier for small businesses uh, 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 by uh, finding a way to partner between WhatsApp and GeoMod. GeoMod is Geo's program to bring, uh, depending on the time frame, 20, 25, 30 million plus uh, small businesses into the uh, online retail network in India. Uh, so that energy will continue. Uh, and that will, I think, have multiplier impact, uh, not just for small businesses directly, but for many companies, because there may be uh, development of all kinds of tools uh, that will allow this digitization of the small business uh, to be accelerated. I think third uh, to the question that you asked on Instagram and Facebook shops, um, there are a lot of products and I think we have a roadmap for launching them in India and we'll continue to work on that. And, and I think you should reach out uh, in, in terms of any specific help you need on Instagram. Uh, I think many of these are, what we want to make sure is when we, uh, there are many pilots that are open, we want to make sure that these pilots are fine tuned where we can actually add impact to your business before we fully open the door. So where we haven't really opened it in India, it's because we are still learning how to better serve the kind of help that you're seeking uh, from us. Uh, we don't want to be in a position where we're just opening the doors and you don't see the impact. I think uh, that's the only reason where in some cases, if you haven't seen the product launch from us, it's because we want to make sure we get it right. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, just to sign off, Ajit, in one word, what does future mean for you? Hopeful, Rohit. Uh, Hopeful. I think going back to the beginning of this, uh, I think... Uh, as much as it's been difficult and we have seen uh, so much sort of economic disruption as well as, um, you know, as well as uh, the, the extent of the illness in countries around the world, including in India, uh, I, I'm hopeful that we'll come out of it, we'll, we'll kind of take our learnings from it and we'll find a way to new, build new things uh, and, and gear up for what the world looks like uh, as we slowly emerge out of, out of this. Well, thank you so much, Ajit, for your time. Uh, for the audience, we do have a poll which we are launching, I think, anytime soon while I wrap up this session. And uh, just to summarize um, some of the points that Ajit made, I think what, the, what India is going to experience is a huge opportunity for the SMB business uh, to actually get on WhatsApp, uh, help WhatsApp convert their businesses, make their businesses into digital. The partnership with Geo is going to help facilitate that. Uh, one of the key highlights. Second is, uh, it is the agility and the capability of these two organizations which uh, complement each other very well to actually uh, bring this to light for, for consumers across India. And it, it goes beyond just the top end of the economic sector. And last but not the least is, marketing and advertising, which is what we all care for so much, is going to get revitalized, if you will. There is going to be new thinking. Old school marketeers are going to look at digital from a very different perspective. And the new and the marketeers who were very digital savvy are also going to look at it, given that they have experienced something which has never been done before. Brand building, which normally did not happen on uh, digital, would happen and there'll be a lot more. Thank you so much for your time and patience. We really appreciate you making time on, on this Tuesday with, to be with us. And we look forward to seeing you on our next panel. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ajit, for being here. Really appreciate it. Okay, go ahead. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys.